Hello and welcome back to Locked On Oilers Podcast. On today's episode, Jack Campbell or Philly Huso? Who would you choose? We go over that. Plus, Kevin Korchinski has been the name of the draft so far. I don't think he'll fall to the Oilers, but... Is there a chance? We will talk about that. Plus, Josh Archibald's season report card, and it wasn't great. We'll get to that and so much more in today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to the Locked On Oilers podcast. I am your host and former Oilers game day producer, Brett Holden, yes, as mentioned on today's episode, we're going through the crease, baby, as we see who's going to join Stuart Skinner in the Oilers' net next season. Will it be Jack Campbell? Will it be Vili Husso? Will it be somebody else? We will get into that plus. Kevin Korchinski, as promised, as they at the end of last episode, we talked about Kevin Korchinski a couple times. Kevin Korchinski has been mentioned in some uh, comments as well on this page. I don't think he'll fall to the Edmonton Oilers, but is there a possibility? And why do I think he might fall to the Edmonton Oilers? We will get into that. Plus, Josh Archibald, we know he didn't really uh, catch all of the season. We know why. We will get into his season report card as it wasn't fantastic. But thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. Plus, we're on YouTube as well. So if you haven't followed us on there yet or subscribed to the YouTube Make sure you do that. What are you doing? Alrighty, let's move into the creases. Yes, Jack Campbell or Vili Husso. That seems to be the debate between Edmonton Oilers fans and Edmonton Oilers supporters. There isn't really a clear answer as to who's going to join Stuart Skinner in the crease just yet. Obviously, there are a ton of intangibles that go into it. Will Evander Kane resign? Will Tyson Berry get traded? Will Mike Smith retire? I think he's going to. I mean, it sounded like he was basically on his way out. I've talked to some people, and it sounds like he was basically ready to retire at uh, that press conference there that day. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like uh, Mike Smith is going to be in the Oilers' plans in the future. So, obviously, that clears up a space next to Stuart Skinner. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like Jack Campbell. Now that comes off kind of rude and in the wrong way because I do like Jack Campbell. I like Jack Campbell as a goaltender. I like Jack Campbell as a person. Obviously, you see all this stuff about Jack Campbell off the ice and he's one of the nicest human beings there are in the game or there is in the game. But I don't think... He is going to be the guy that is going to push the team, a team, any team, to a Stanley Cup final. I just don't. I don't see it in his personality. I don't see it in his play style. I don't think he has been able to absolutely take over a crease, even though he's been the starter and basically forced Frederick Anderson out of Toronto. A ton of very good uh, talent or top end talent in Toronto out because Toronto had trust in this guy. And I mean, you take a look at the numbers and it's not too, too bad. This past season, he had a 0.913 save percentage, which is good for about 18th in the league amongst goaltenders who have played at least 1,000 minutes this past season. Uh, his goals against uh, goals against average, so every game, was 2.64. I was getting into that goals against per 60. I was, I was ready to jump on it, but no, goalies just get goals against average. At a 2.64, which was about the middle of the league it was 15th in the league but it was better than Sergei Bobrovsky Thatcher Demko Mike Smith Marc-Andre Fleury and Semyon Varlamov so bunch of names that are a also potentially uh, available for the Oilers to take a look at so out of the sample size and the potential players or the player pool that the Oilers have to pick out of not too bad but it's still middle of the pack 
he's not going to take over that crease for you. And you can really tell just how much of a workload he really had when you take a look at the shots he faced to the saves he had. Saves, he had 13, 1,300 saves. almost said 13,000. That would have been insane. 1,307 saves, which was 21st in the league after facing 1,430 shots against. 14,000 shots, 14,000, excuse me, 1,400 shots against on Jack Campbell. That is a lot of shots, a lot of shots. And the Edmonton Oilers, who aren't exactly the best at defending shots or preventing shots, especially if they're going to be losing a guy like Chris Russell or a guy like Duncan Keith who can get in front of shots. In fact, those are the two best shot blockers ever. I was going to say this generation, ever, ever. Those are one and two in blocked shots, and the Edmonton Oilers might lose both of those players. So Jack Campbell's workload is going to get almost worse. And at an average clip of, at a, of a save percentage and an average clip of goals against average is not very compelling. Now, I know he's not going to be playing all of the games because you're going to want to push uh, Stuart Skinner. But even if you're only playing a mediocre goaltender a bunch of times, you're listen, the, the regular season is the regular season, right? It's, it comes down to the playoffs. And Jack Campbell is not going to win a playoff series for you. He has no experience in winning a playoff series. Literally zero experience. But Vili Husso, on the other hand, who... Yes, when you take a look at some of the numbers that aren't fantastic, 13th in the league in goals against uh, with, at 2.56. Still better than uh, 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 Jack Campbell, but the save percentage at a .918 was good for 6th in the league, which is fantastic. He didn't have much of a workload, uh, or as much of a workload as Jack Campbell. In fact, he, had, he was 27th in the league in both shots against and in saves, so he had a really good defense in front of him, but they won a series. Vili Husso was able to come into a situation where Jordan Bennington at times wasn't the guy, was injured, was really struggling, and Vili Husso was able to come in for that St. Louis Blues team and still instill trust within that team. Now, the issue with Vili Husso, and I understand, I understand why, is that Vili Husso doesn't have the same experience as Jack Campbell. Jack Campbell has 135 games in the NHL under his belt, and Vili Husso has 57 regular season games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost 100 more games under Jack Campbell's belt than Vili Husso. But Vili Husso is younger at 27. And the career stats favor Jack Campbell. Is that good considering that he has more games compared to Vili Husso? Because normally when you get more games, you're going to have maybe a, a more drawn out uh, uh uh, stat line where a goaltender or a goaltender who hasn't played a lot of games may have a little bit of either a really poor stat line because they came into some tough games or maybe they have a super inflated stat line because uh, every game that they came into they were really into the game you're you know just had really good games that's why you can't really measure when you get onto a stats page and you just go oh let's take a look at the goals against average wow this guy had a 1.06 and that get guy played three games and you don't realize that right we need to take a look at the minutes that they're playing and Vili Husso important minutes for St. Louis and won a series with St. Louis Played a very difficult uh, Colorado Avalanche team after Jordan Binnington went down and won them a couple of games as well. 
That experience is massive, and Vili Huso is a goaltender who can get the Edmonton Oilers to the next level. I don't think Jack Campbell is. Now, that may have been a bunch of waffling, and you may not agree with me, so I want to know, who do you think would be the proper pick in net for the Edmonton Oilers? Would it be Vili Huso? Would it be Jack Campbell? Should they bring back Mike Smith? Should they trade for uh, uh, John Gibson? Almost called him Jack Gibson. John Gibson, should we? Is there any other? Is there anybody out there? Is anybody listening to our call? That's not a real song. But anyways, we shall move on to Kevin Korchinski and into our NHL draft portion of today's episode. Is Yes, we are only a week away from the NHL draft. So much exciting things to go around there, around the draft. But first... I want to tell you about our partners over at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's MLB playoffs and their Major League Baseball All-Star Game projections. We can see who just might become an MLB All-Star. Alejandro Kirk, how are you doing? Santiago Espinal for the Blue Jays. There's some of the leading vote getters in the MLB. Yeah, Santiago Espinal. Let's go, Jays fans. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and much more. Plus, you also can get your scores on there as well while you're wondering. Who you bet on and you take a look at, oh man, did I get that money line? You can get right to betonline.net and see those scores right there. And betonline.net remains the best spot for all your sports uh, scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Alrighty, happy Wednesday, everybody. We're getting our hydration break into us today. Ready? You got a big water today. Got to stay hydrated. Got to stay hydrated. It's getting warm again. What a beautiful summer we're getting. Uh, but yes, let's move into the draft. Is this is a player, as I've mentioned, has been commented on a couple of of, of videos. Has really risen in the draft stock recently. At one point, he was close to where the Edmonton Oilers are, was projected uh, around where the Edmonton Oilers are picking. Now it doesn't seem like he's going to be that close, but I really think that whoever picks Kevin Korchinski is going to have a defensive liability on their hands. Yes. A defensive liability for one of the top defensemen that is going to be picked in this year's NHL draft. That's not great. (laughs) That is really not great. Kevin Korchinski, you can take a look at all the pros that this kid brings. I'm telling you, this kid Brings a lot of pros. He is such a smooth skater. If you watched any of the Edmonton Oil Kings uh, final against the uh, St. Saint- Louis Blues, against the Seattle Thunderbirds, you know just how important of a player Kevin Korchinski is to the Seattle Thunderbirds and just what exactly he brings to the table. Smooth skater, a great puck mover. He really sees the ice well from the as a defenseman, especially with the puck. But for Kevin Korchinski, the best thing that he knows to do or knows how to do in his own zone is how to get out of it. He knows the best way to get out of the defensive zone and into the offensive zone than he knows how to chase a puck carrier around his net, cover a guy in front of the net. If I'm going to be 100% honest with you, Kevin Korchinski feels like Ethan Bear 2.0. All the offensive upside in the world, but then you go and take a look at a Seattle Thunderbirds game, and you go and say, oh, well, the the Thunderbirds just got scored on. Whose man was that? Oh, that was Kevin Korchinski's. 
Oh no, the Thunderbirds just got scored on again. Whose man is oh Kevin Korchinski? The compete level from the defensive end to the offensive end are on two totally different spectrums for Kevin Korchinski. Now, I mean, I don't get the numbers wrong. In 67 games, four goals. Okay, I hear you going. Why? 61 assists. 61 assists. Now, that's the upside that you're drafting. 61 assists and in, in 65 points in 67 games played. And then in the playoffs, in, in the regular season, he only scored four goals in 67 games played. In the playoffs, in 25 games played, he scored six goals, 13 assists, 19 points. So the offensive upside is there. I'm telling you, he has all the offensive upside in the world. But you're drafting a defenseman. There's a difference between a guy like Kale McCarr, who has even more offensive upside than Kevin Korchinski, and Kevin Korchinski, who has all the upside Kevin Korchinski has, but no defensive effort. I mean... I mean, he genuinely sometimes get lost, gets lost defensively. I remember watching in that finals a shift where I believe it was Jeremy Lipin. It was either Lipin or Neighbors came right in on uh, 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 Korchinski, who had his back to the middle of the ice, and one of the wingers came around on Korchinski, picked his pocket, and he didn't even start chasing him. He just watched him show so much more effort than him, lose the puck to him, and then not try and A, get the puck back, or B, get into position. He just watched it happen. It was almost like Cody Bellinger for the Dodgers watching a home run being played on the Jumbotron just staring off into space. It was incredible to see. Because, again, he has had so much of this top-end talk. This Kevin Korchinski. He's gone from the 30s rankings and 40s rankings to 10th. Bob McKenzie have, has him 10th on his list of the top draft rank or dra- top prospects in this year's draft. And I see almost no defensive upside. Now, okay. I realize I just ripped absolutely harshly into this kit. But defense is something that's teachable. We just need to see out of Kevin Korchinski that ability and that almost wherewithal to go out there in tenacity, to go out there and want to learn and get better defensively. Because it can happen. You can see how well he skates in the offensive end. You can see how well his mind works in the offensive end. All you need to basically do is rewire it and say, hey, you know all those great lanes you see in the offensive zone? Well, imagine all those great lanes that the other team sees in our defensive end. And all you have to do is plug those lanes. I don't know. I'm not the best coach. I'm not a coach, I should say, at all. So that is up to development coaches and stuff like that. That is something that can be figured out in development. But that is why I just really think Kevin Korchinski isn't going to be the best pick in this draft. Far from it, honestly. I think he's going to be... I do think he will end up being a top four defenseman uh, based on his draft pedigree or something like that. But I think he's almost going to turn out like an Eric Johnson type where it just... Yeah, just all the offensive... Uh, uh, hype almost in the world all the hype as a defenseman as a prospect in the world i just don't think it's going to translate too much for him i hope it does i hope it does because truly if you do get to watch kevin korchinski you can see he's just a really special player offensively and with the puck you don't want that taken away from a player, but you never know. But uh, let's call it there. Let's call it there on Korchinski. I hope I'm wrong about him genuinely. That is the beauty about uh, projections and draft proje- projections is that these players get to prove people like me wrong. So uh, 
All the power to you. Alrighty, let's move on to back to the Edmonton Oilers and the season report cards in the final period of today's episode as Josh Archibald. Not a great season for Josh Archibald on or off the ice. So we will get into his season report card in just a second. But first, I just want to talk to you a little bit about Locked On NHL as it is Sarah from uh, actually the Locked On Kings podcast as we had Sarah on the show while we were facing the LA Kings uh, uh, in the playoffs. It's her last show on the Locked On NHL show and her last week as well. So make sure you go and send Sarah a farewell and a thank you as well because honestly we wouldn't be here where we are right now because of Sarah and uh, Locked on Kings so make sure you go and say thank you and all the best to her uh, over there at Locked on NHL and Locked on Kings alrighty uh, I just wanted to say that because again uh, she made me feel so welcome as a new host and uh, and honestly has really helped us as well grow for Locked on Oilers alrighty Let's move on quickly to Josh Archibald because there isn't really much to say about Josh Archibald. He only played in eight games in the uh, regular season. Played more games in the playoffs, actually, uh, did Josh Archibald than he did in the regular season. Like I mentioned, eight games in the regular season. No goals, one assist, one point for him there. And then in the playoffs, 13 games played, no goals, one assist, one point for a grand total of two points in 22 games. 23, 23. Eight plus, eight plus 13 is 23? Yeah, one of those. 22 or 23 games there uh, for him. And 21, 21, there we go. Um, but uh, just not fantastic. What you expected from Josh Archibald just wasn't really there. And when you got to the playoffs and got to the end of the playoffs, especially against Colorado, even against Calgary, so many fans and so many people were just calling for Dylan Holloway because there was basically nothing being done by Josh Archibald. And I was one of those people that was trying to, you know, say, hey, guys, come on, give him a chance. He plays on the penalty kill. Not on Jay Woodcross penalty kill. <laughs> Not on Jay Woodcross penalty kill at all. Because in fact, when I went to go look at uh, the goals for uh, per 60 and the goals against per 60, yes, we're bringing that stat back. I went to go and take a look at his goals against per 60 shorthanded and they weren't there. Because he didn't play on Jay Woodcross penalty kill. So he didn't play on the penalty kill. He's not playing on the power play. It seems like a theme in these bottom six guys. So what are they doing? Well, at five on five, uh, Josh Archibald was a whopping 1.88 goals for per 60 in five on five, which was good for 27th on the team. Goals against at five on five was a solid 4.11. Good for 29th on the team. Yeah, uh, I, I'm astonished, honestly. That is, that's genuinely worse than those goaltending stats that we brought up earlier. Uh, could you imagine, could you imagine Jack Campbell playing behind a 4.11 goals against per 60 at 5-on-5? Five five? His, his goals against would go up to 3.3 easily. What a, what a, what are you doing out there where you, the other team is scoring four goals per 60 minutes you're out there? Especially when you're out there for what? You average maybe seven minutes a game? Are you that far out of position? Are you that poorly influential on the team that that is your goals against per 60 at 5 on 5? You're not playing on the power play. You're not playing on the penalty kill. You're not playing on the penalty kill. He did not play under Jay Woodcross penalty kill in the regular season. And yet he still had a 4.11 goals against. 
horrendous. And then, in all situations, at 3.4 goals against per 60, which was good for 24th on the team. And then, in all situations, a 1.56 goals for per 60, good for 28th on the team. Why did you even come back? Because we know about the off-ice stuff. We know about the off-ice stuff, and that's fine. If you want to come back and actually have a purpose on the ice, then please do. But you didn't. You came back to the Edmonton Oilers, and you didn't have an impact. Eight games in the regular season, one point. 13 games in the playoffs, in the biggest, most important playoff run in Edmonton Oilers' recent history since 2006. And you did nothing. One point, one assist. That's it. Thanks for showing up, Josh Archibald. That is our first F for failure we are giving this season I guess this report card it's going to be the only one honestly it was bad I'm embarrassed to be honest with you so thanks for showing up I guess I know that sounds very salty and poor but you take a look at the numbers it just wasn't worth him coming back and potentially stunting the the growth the development of a guy like Dylan Holloway who played Seven minutes, six minutes in the last game against Colorado it wasn't even a factor. Like, uh, just, just poor. Just stunted the growth of a really good player, or potentially really good player for the Oilers. It just did nothing for the team when he was on the ice. Just an F. All right, I'm rambling too much now because now I feel like I have to justify my answer. I think a lot of people agree with me. We'll call it there because now I'm upset. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm Again, I'm, my voice isn't back yet. So I'm sorry for the half-hearted uh, uh, go at it today. Uh, I will try and get better next time. And for you, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you stay safe. Enjoy the summer weather. What a beautiful day. We're only a week away from the NHL draft and only a few days away from that free agent frenzy as well. So stay safe. Don't do anything I wouldn't do.